You're listening to the Finding Careers End podcast. I'm your host, Pete Newsom, and I'm joined again this week by Ricky Baez. Ricky, welcome back. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm feeling great. Ask me why. Why, Ricky? Why are you feeling and doing great? <laughs> the Bills won last night. Did you see that game? Convincingly. They won, <laughs> they won big time. They did such an amazing job, but I got to tell you that wide receiver over for the uh, for LA Cup, man, that dude, it, 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 it yeah, he is going to have a great year. I'm just, I'm just happy that football is finally back. And uh, yeah, I saw that meme the other day that uh, now between now and February, now a team, whether they win or lose, get to dictate my personality for the week. So that's awesome. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad I caught you at the right time. But I think as a Bills <laughs> fan, you're going to be in a good mood for most of the next few months, I'm, I'm guessing. Until the playoffs. Yeah, absolutely. I don't that's, know. Uh, it's, be it's a good different, mood until <laughs> different feel this year. But Cooper Cup's crazy good. I had him on my Ooh. fantasy team last year. I'm not this year unfortunately it's going to be hard to play against that guy he's he's amazing <laughs> yeah so it's uh, i'm just i'm just happy that uh, thursday nights are back and uh saturdays sundays and mondays so um yeah get ready chicken wing recipes are going to be on my on my instagram feed so uh perfect love it well you're also back for uh, a second week for finding careers in because we promised that you would come back to talk about freelancing because and, right. and, and in particular i think you wanted to ask me a question about that right i did so you know i'm not gonna lie pete i was a bit confused right because i saw i saw the article that you put out on august 15th it's freelancing worth it the pros and cons and i read it and it made perfect sense but i started thinking you own a staffing company <laughs> i <Right>? do <laughs> <laughs> so, so what is the owner of a staffing company or how is the owner of a staffing company such a big fan of freelancing? Because isn't something like that, now please forgive me, but isn't something like that go against what you do every day or no? It does. It, it, it can. Um, Help me out. Help me out here. Well, it, it, so I'm a consumer of, of freelance talent, So number mm -hmm. one. Um, so I'm a believer in it. And I think above all, you know, it makes sense. And, and this shouldn't, this shouldn't be necessary to say, but of course I'll, I'll say it anyway, uh, to be honest and open uh, about all things. I, you know, as a, as a staffing company owner, right from the start mm -hmm. with, uh, with four corner resources, you know, my staffing business it, um, is now in its 18th year. Um, I didn't want to be everything to everyone and, and knew that wasn't realistic, but I wanted to, uh, develop genuine lasting relationships with those organizations that I supported. And hmm. kind of one of the things that led me to start my own company was that I didn't have that luxury working for large employers, which I had up until starting Four Corner. I was told uh, it, you know, who, who to support, whether it was a good client or not, whether we were a hmm. partner and not, you know, and not just a vendor. And I didn't want to do business that way once I had the ability to make my own choices. So yeah. With that in mind, I always wanted to just be genuine in in how I approach things. And knowing that w when someone uh, looks at hiring and and who they need to hire and how and when, most of the time they're not going to use us. So of all the hiring that's going to happen in America mm -hmm. or across the, the globe in the next week, the vast, vast majority of it is not going to ha happen through four corner resources. I know that, right? Okay. So right. I, I want to be uh, you know, consistent in in my message always of whatever I think is the, the right uh, answer at, at any given time. And a lot of cases, it's not going to be using us. It's not going to be to partner with um, us or any other staffing company. And I believe that the freelance market has hit um, – you know, uh, uh, it's at a point where we have to consider it um, and all the benefits that it can do for both mm. uh, the the companies who need to hire talent as well as the um, the people out there who are working and have talent to offer because uh, its time is very much come, in my opinion. It has been here for a while. Well, yes, in 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 looking at the article because you have your own personal take on on freelancing the pros and cons um if i could just jump real quick because the pros i mean it, it, it's look freelancing has always been out there but i think the pandemic has really pushed the envelope whoever was on the edge wondering if this is something i want to do and go on my own 
for the people that were there right right on the edge, you know, the pandemic kind of pushed them over and not having a choice, right? And I'm, I haven't done any, any of the studies, Pete, but I'm willing to bet that, you know, the people who really take that plunge into freelancing, pandemic aside, are people who, A, are taking a humongous risk and they're okay with it, and B, they have no other option. Right. So for the people who who was thinking about it before the pandemic, right, obviously they got pushed, but they had a lot to lose. So there's a lot of risk involved. But then now these days in 2022 is easier than before. I think you and I talked about this a, a few months ago that if anybody was to lose their job today, today's Friday, right, they can easily make a couple of hundred bucks this weekend. They should sign up on Uber Eats, sign up for Uber or Lyft or anything like that or find a new one. It's called Rabbit rabbit task rabbit i don't know task if you've rabbit. seen that have you okay so you've heard of it yep. one of my clients told me about it and i'm like what's a task rabbit i thought they literally had a rabbit in the office they trained to do different tasks right because i mean the way he was talking about it but then he told me is that somebody runs errands for you and so they hold get on before, before before you go too far what what tasks do you envision that a rabbit would be capable of pulling off I have no set. idea. That's why I was so intrigued. I was like, I don't know. Hey, go get me a carrot because I'm on a diet. I don't know. <laughs> They'll eat it on the way back. <laughs> That's right. I'm sure the rabbit would be happy to not eat the carrot and save it for you. That would... If I could train a rabbit to go fetch me a beer. See that fridge right there? If I could train a rabbit to go get a beer out of that fridge, it'll be amazing. Okay, it'll so be... so let's let's, let's separate that a little bit where when I think of freelancing, a couple things you, you mentioned. Um, I don't see it as an act of of desperation. Far from it. I, I see it as the polar opposite. I, I mm. see it as an act of choosing freedom. And I'll tell you what you know why that's very personal to me is uh, one of the things that led me to start my own business, effectively become a freelancer because any entrepreneur is True. in, in, in yeah. a sense, is uh, when, uh, one, I wanted to do business in a personal way, as I kind of alluded to a few minutes ago, I wanted to do business the way I thought it should be done. But the real catalyst that made me just stop talking and, and take action and put a, draw a line in the sand and say, I'm, I'm doing this, was when my VP, who was you know, a, loved you know, uh, and adored and, and respected, I mean, he was just such a great manager and leader and producer. I mean, he, he did everything right as far as I could tell mm -hmm. as, as someone who reported uh, up through him. He was reorged out of his job, and this guy was in his fifties, and you know, counted on the income that that this mm. large company provided. He had moved his family across the country for this role, and he was just reorged, you know, with the stroke of a pen, out of his job, and that was terrifying to me as as an employee yeah. because I thought, here I am working for this organization with sixteen thousand employees. The, the the CEO doesn't even know who I am, and mm. I thought man, what, what's the risk really? You know, I'm, I was in my mid thirties and I thought, well, I sell for a living. So I know I can do that since that's how I've, you know, already am, am getting by and, and, and doing well at it. Um, but at any given moment, someone could make my job go away. And yeah. that to me was terrifying. I didn't sleep after that happened because it really just hit me that the real risk was not taking ownership of my professional and financial success on my own. The real risk was leaving it in someone's hands who I don't even know. <laughs> and once that <laughs> thought got in my head, I couldn't get away from it. So when I think of freelancing, I think the opposite of, um, of risk. I think of it as, is you know, buy your own security by, uh, by putting that burden on yourself. And, and I'll tell you, as, as time goes on and we've seen things like the Affordable Care Act, as an example, where uh, you know, the federal government, who I'd prefer, as, as I say often, to stay completely out of the relationship between employees and employers or the workforce at all. <laughs> okay, most things. Almost <laughs> um, I get you. But, but I, you know, have they... they yeah, you know, there's so many mandates that have been put in place, and at the state level, as you know, being you know being an HR um, you know professional, that they uh, continue to want to tie the employer to taking care of an employee, and and maybe more importantly, 
create a mindset where an employee expects to be taken care of by mm. their employer to provide health care, um, you know, uh, to um, you know, look at the list of perks and benefits that are being offered now in, in 2022 yeah. by companies. And it just ties these folks together. And I think it is outside of the nature of how that relationship should be. I think you, I, I, I think those expectations shouldn't go beyond the working relationship, right? I have a job that needs to be done. I need someone with that talent and someone with that talent sets a value on their time and skill and 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 expertise and if and if we can mesh those things together then we should work together provided we you know like the conditions we like each other um you know it leads to to down a path that we both want to go down and that's it anything yeah. beyond that boy we're we're just c- complicating things and no offense as i wrote in the in the in the blog Ask yourself why HR departments are so big. It's not because things are going so well between employees and employers, right? Why I'm in business. <laughs> I mean, by the way, you're, 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 the demand's not going away anytime soon. No, it's not. I tell people all the time that as long as you have one human being working with another, you're going to need someone like me. You're always going to need someone like me. And and Pete, I I, I agree with you 100%. I, I, I am on the camp of let let the market speak for itself. Let the market decide how the relationship should be. And what I mean by that is let the person A decide with person B together how that employee, employer, or contract, contractee relationship is going to look like. Um, and one of the things that I that I noticed on your blog that I'm like, okay, I agree with this is, you know, yes, there is risk. And you, you saying... I think you it's I'm trying to put it in words right now. I don't want to put words in your mouth. You you said about five minutes ago, it's not that people are pushed. It's that sometimes the risk is you look at the risk as what if I don't do it? To me, that's the bigger issue, whether disrupting what I currently have right now. But I gotta tell you, it, it's it took me a while to pull the trigger for what I'm doing, Pete. And for me, what what stands out in my mind, Robin Williams, um, he said an awesome quote before he passed away he said a i i i think he said an empty stomach and an empty wallet would teach you the best lessons and that motivates people the best right i love it but yeah i mean but it's true it's true it, it it does teach you the best lessons so if you have a full stomach if you have a full wallet it's hard to be motivated to do a lot more right especially if you're content with where you are in your career so for somebody who's got things nice and stable, the risk there is, why, sh- why should I disrupt what I currently have right mm. now versus where you looked at it is, I don't want anybody else in charge of my destiny but me, which I agree with. But it's hard, I got to tell you. It's well, hard to it, make that leap when you have things stable. Well, it's hard because the world tells us not to do that, right? Parents you know, tell you mm. to study in school so you can go to college, so you can get a job right? Teachers tell you that. Your your guidance counselors tell you that. Yeah. Go to college, get a degree so you can get a job, right? I hate that phrase. It, it's the <laughs> worst. Like, get a job is just, as I you know, just said in an interview yesterday, it's just the most demoralizing thing that a young person could hear, in my opinion. And so let, let's just, just, I'll put you on the spot a little bit here. Um, for anyone who who doesn't know who's listening, which probably most people don't know that the way we met is because we had a, an, an internal opening for someone to lead our, our HR um, organization to s- establish it, to lead it internally. You interviewed for that job. I liked you. You liked me. And you agreed to come work for Four Corner Resources in that yep. capacity. That's right. Uh, you let us know uh, you were open. Uh, um, you know, we, we had this kind of relationship, fortunately, where you said, Hey, I, I have a desire to ultimately be a consultant, not an employee. And, um, and so, you know, can, is there, you know, can we, can we go in that direction? And and we planned it at, I think, you know, six months in advance, we were, we yeah. were, we, we made that happen. It was right for you. It was right for us. And it was a really good fit. So my question to you then, because keep in mind, we're, we're <laughs> really looking at this from the employee's perspective mm-hmm. and why it's good. 
I'll tell you my perspective on the Higher Calling podcast when we talk about this, this topic as, as, as the employer. What changed in our relationship? Be honest about this. In the relationship? Yeah, in the relationship from when I was your employer to mm -hmm. when I'm now your client uh, from a consulting standpoint. What changed? Good or Nothing bad. changed in that relationship. It didn't change because this is something I've wanted to do for a long time. And what I was saying earlier, it's, it's true to me. Whereas we've, we've lived below our means, right? Which is the right thing to do. Um, I mean, I guess I'll put this out that we weren't living paycheck to paycheck. So I said, eventually this is where I want to end up. Yep. Right. Because I got my 10, 15 year plan. As soon as my son is out of high school, you go to the Marine Corps, go to college, start a trade, do something. But mommy and daddy are going to buy a fifth, a fifth wheel and travel the country on an RV. That's what we're oh, going to say. Mommy and I are going to buy a fifth and we're going to drink <laughs> it. Oh, there's anyway, going to be a bunch going. of those in the in the fifth wheel. But it's a, <laughs> keep, keep for those going. of you who don't know, a fifth wheel is one of those um, uh, RV trailers that you hook up to the bed of a pickup truck and they call it a fifth wheel. I've been looking into this for a while because I'm thinking about retirement. Um, so I've been saving up, saving up and said, you know what? I have to draw a line, right? Yeah. And if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this right now. And if it doesn't work, I have a net. So I realized not everybody's lucky to do that. Right. And I was lucky enough that it worked beautifully. I, I had a great relationship with you guys, other clients that have done stuff in the past on a part-time basis that now I turn full-time. So to me, it wasn't the environment. To me, this was a goal that I'm like, if I don't do this right now, I'm never going to be able to do this. So I made a decision in my head to say, you know what, here's what, here's what we have going. And plus with four corner resources, you know, um, I've turned some keys already that I'm like, okay, I turned some keys. This is working you guys don't need somebody in my caliber. Now, could I have been that one guy that could just make stuff up, right? And make it look like I'm busy. I guess I could have done that. You would have caught up to it, but that's not how I conduct business. Well, well, that's me, why let, we, let yeah. me cut you off if you don't mind. We did need someone of your cal caliber. We didn't need someone of your caliber full time, which was a realization okay. that you came to and, and presented to us as, hey, what if, you know, I'm really, you're, I think the kind of the way it went down was that, you know, as a, you're a highly compensated guy because of your level and knowledge and expertise, but you were only getting to apply that level of knowledge and expertise yeah. to business, maybe, you know, 20% of the time. And so that was effectively what you suggested, which is, which is highly unusual, right? For an employee to come and say, <laughs> Hey, I think, I think you need less of me, right? Which is effectively <laughs> what you did. Yeah, and we and you made a great case and said, "Look, I I'm the strategic stuff that I bring to the table. Um, you only need part time, and and you're kind of overpaying for the rest of it." And it made perfect sense. And so, what what I I was setting you up to answer, I thought, was, <laughs> um, it, it didn't work. Um, was I think it made the relationship healthier, right right uh, right from the start? Because now you don't have to worry about and and maybe you didn't have to worry about this anyway i hope i hope you didn't but now i'm i'm an employee and i'm subject to things like layoffs and 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 you know and terminations and and all of these things that are just awful to have to think about as an individual who um, is 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 just trying to do the best at what they're doing and trying to you know go through their day being being healthy and happy and productive and successful to add on these complexities that come with the traditional employee employer relationship and now it all goes away right it, it immediately goes away and now we're just hey here's the work you know um, that we need here's the the skill and knowledge you offer do these things match up to what at what value to how many hours a week or a month or a year, whatever it might be. And if, and if we have an accord there, right. If, if it makes sense to you and it makes sense to us, then we work together and we don't have any drama associated with it. I mean, it's so plain. <laughs> hey, so I got to tell you, Pete, I, I'm not going to lie. I, I, I was not worried about that. And I'm about to make some people upset here uh, because again, I, I, I put a pad down, right. I put a net. If I, if I was a trapeze artist and God help me, I <laughs> become a trapeze artist. I have a net beneath me, right? So to me, I wasn't really worried about that. Um, 
to me, I was worried about being authentic, right? Because I just started to to notice. I'm like, I I could do this part time, and it coincides with what I want to do, and that's why to me is really important. And you know, there's anybody that's worked with me know this. I'm I like to be a hundred percent transparent because I care more about the relationship than anything else, right? And I give you a great example. Um, a couple of months ago, a client overpaid me by eighteen hundred dollars than what we initially uh, uh, agreed upon. And I'm looking at this, why Why did he give me this, right? So I reached out to him, hey, um, you overpay me, I'm gonna send this back to you. He was really upset at his payroll people, really upset at the, C- <laughs> at the CFO, but was really baffled that I actually spoke up. And I was surprised at why he was surprised, because I'm like, nobody ever does it. Like, no, people would just say whatever, because it's a pretty big client, right? It's it's to them that's that's chump change. But to me, what's important is the relationship. So that's why you and I had a good relationship. And I'm like, hey, here's what I'm seeing, right? And here's what I want to do. This is a perfect puzzle piece. Once we put this together, we have the picture. Here we go. And it's working beautifully. Um, but the concerns you had early on in your career wasn't necessarily the same concerns I have later in my career. I, I would venture to guess that if, actually, no, I'm not gonna venture, I'm, I'm gonna tell you exactly. Back in, in my mid thirties, yeah, I will be worried if I got let go because I have no other income, right? I've got nothing else to fall back on. Now I'm a little, you know, I'm more, I'm wiser. Uh, I planned better. So if it happens, it happens so well, but these days, Pete, it's so easy. It really is, so, nobody has an excuse not to be able to make money. So I, I want to um, jump on that a little bit because it's it's not always been easy. You said back you know, early in your career, you would have looked at it differently. Right? Yeah. I think that's what you were saying. And, and, and of course, because you didn't have the transferable knowledge and skill set yep. and, and reputation and all those things. And it's one of the, the things that I believe in very strongly and try to um, always mention in any podcast uh, that is, it takes time. It, it takes time to earn a reputation. It takes time to earn the kind of knowledge and skill that will allow you to go out in the world and say, hey, you you should hire me potentially at a premium. Um, you should hire me as a freelancer uh, because I bring this expertise to the table and I don't need to be trained. I don't need to be mm-hmm. managed closely. I just need um, the opportunity to work and 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 show what I can do and deliver. And again, I, when I, I I don't I can't come up with a better word than healthy when I think of that type of relationship okay. where every day, effectively, I always look and say, you know, the, everyone starts new every day, right? Every employee has the opportunity to, when they wake up in the morning, the only, the only, there's only two requirements in the day, right? You get up and you go to bed. Everything you do in between is a matter of priority. So when you wake up in the morning, is your priority to go to the beach for the day or is it to go go to work? And, and so hmm. I look at every, is the employee-employee relationship, whether it's freelance or, or traditional, um, as, as a daily agreement, right? Because I could do, there's, there's something every single day that I could do to have my employees choose to never want to work for me again. Mm -hmm. And there's something that every employee that, that, that I've ever had could do in a day. Sometimes they have, and sometimes I have, I'm sure, uh, that would make, um, uh, me choose to never want them to work another day for me again. So I really do believe these relationships are day to day. So the the perceived risk of being a freelancer as an employee um, is really just that. It's a perception and, and, and it's not reality because mm. reality is you are one day away from, from being unemployed anyway. You might yeah. not feel that way and hopefully you don't. Yeah. But I think the freelance relationship sort of strips away all the... Um, all the things that 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 aren't we shouldn't rely on anyway and aren't necessarily real. Again, the employer being responsible for the health of the employee, the health of the employee. I, 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 that's that's <laughs> man, that's deep. And 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 I but but I but on the other hand, the freelancer, right? While not relying on their that that company to pay them health care, gets paid a lot more. As a result, and that's what 
you know, the Affordable Care Act didn't take into consideration when it came to the staffing industry, the contract staffing industry in particular, because while the contract employee who now, you know, staffing companies are even for contract employment is are required to provide you know healthcare options yeah. right yeah. historically no one was looking for that option in the contract staffing business the, the contractors weren't because they were making significantly more per hour than the yeah. salaried employee sitting next to them who receives um you know healthcare and time off and sick pay, you know sick pay and all these things that come with being a, a direct employee what the, the hourly contractor next to them usually was making 25 to 50% mm -hmm. more per hour as a trade-off and no one was complaining. Yeah. No one was complaining. So to me, if the freelance market sort of brings that back around now, I mean, we're, it's the same thing. We're just calling it something different and cutting out, by the way, the staffing company in between in many cases. So for the employee, it's a very attractive offer if you have the the right talent and skills to bring to the table and now that that but that has to be built over time that that's a huge x factor in this i would not recommend you know a 22 year old who um has you know a year of, of professional experience to announce to the world that they're ready for hire um you know and, and de deliver expertise because it does have to be built over time i mean there's some exceptions to everything it's not about the age mm -hmm. it's really about the time and, and how I, I think of it, you know, use a sports analogy, how many reps you've gotten, right? Mm -hmm. I want to hire someone that shot, you know, a hundred thousand free throws, not, not a hundred, right? If I'm, if I need someone to, to make the basket. So that makes sense. It makes perfect sense. And, and, and just, just going back real quick to what you just said, because you said something that in my mind, I never put together how as an employer, now we're responsible for people's health. But we're in trouble if we ask what the health issue is, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. That just hit me right now when you said that, right? But you know what, Pete? It, it's it's. I'm looking at your. I'm looking at at the article right now, and I'm gonna just start with uh, with the with the pros because you talk about the pros and you talk about the cons. And what I really enjoy about the pros is to create a freedom. And man, is that true? It is. It is true because you know, I've I've I'm. I'm in a position right now that I could be creative with what I have and sell it because I bring a different flair to HR. Whereas you're right, that takes time to build. The thing that's missing these days, especially with how relevant social media is and how people are becoming millionaires with Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, the patience isn't there anymore. Because how technology has evolved in a way that it almost makes people millionaires in a matter of months. And People don't understand that those are rare cases. That's not the norm. That really is not the norm. Um, my son watches or used to watch this one YouTube um, uh, channel called Ryan's Toys Review. I don't know if you if if you've ever heard of it. I've of heard that. I've heard of yeah. uh, some young. I don't know if this is a young kid who is making more than any other YouTuber for a time for opening packages. The kid <laughs> is. I think he was nine or ten. Right. And the father's involved. Everybody's a, they do these videos. My son dies laughing. And I'm like, wow, that's a beautiful house. Are they sponsored by anybody? So I looked them up. No, on YouTube videos alone, revenue is $19 million a year. $19 million a year, Pete. <laughs> just, just doing YouTube videos. And I guess I'm bringing that up that people see that and people see this flair on social media. And I think that gives an unrealistic expectation of what it means to be a freelancer, what it means to be an entrepreneur. But dang it, that creative freedom is there. And that's something I, I really do appreciate. Now, if I could jump to the cons real quick, because something hit me really hard with the cons. Mm -hmm. If you go to the cons, you got obviously risk. We talked about that lack of structure, but the one that got me loneliness. Pete, let me tell you a little story, brother. Um, when I first, I used to work for Darden restaurants and they laid me off, right? It, but they really took care of me because I did some good work for them in uh, New York City for union stuff. So anyway, I got laid off. So I'm like, you know what? Let me consult for a little bit more because I've had my consultants for, for about 10 years, but I'm like, I'm just going to consult part-time. I started doing that and I started to notice that me as an extrovert, I cannot work from home and not talk to anybody. I cannot. I was dealing with one client who didn't like to sign things 
um, and email it. He likes actual paper, right? So the FedEx guy was here all the time. And I got to know the FedEx guy. My wife was at work. FedEx guy comes in. I saw the New York thing on his uh, on his FedEx truck. I'm like, hey, man, how about the Yankees? So we started talking about it. He got freaked out. Next thing you know, there's a new FedEx guy coming. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> you, you, you creeped out the FedEx? I got, yeah, because I'm like, I'm talking to him, and it, and it hit me. I'm lonely. I'm not talking to anybody. And my wife would come home from work. She was a nurse, a full-time nurse. All she wanted to do was just lay in her bathtub, right, and relax because she had a rough 13 hours. And I'm like, I need to go out and talk to people. I'm having a conversation with my dog, right? <laughs> so I, need to go, I mean, I'm kidding, obviously, but, you know, but it really got lonely. So this is one of the things that people don't realize about being a freelancer. If you used to having a team and you have energy by being around other people, that is something you have to figure out how to work out. I mean, I don't know, was that the same for you when you first started Four Corner Resources? Um, it was, and uh, I, it wasn't lonely as much as I missed, um, su surprisingly. I, I was just telling this, this story to someone the other day that um, even though it's been a long time, I'm, um, I remember the feeling I missed having someone to report to. Not not because I needed hmm. the direction, um, I needed you know the the motivation or someone to to look over my shoulder. You know, uh, you know, no nobody should go out on their own. I'll just make this point unless you already have a really strong work ethic. Yeah. So oh yeah, if, if, right. If you're someone yes. who needs a manager, supervisor, uh, whatever you you want to call it, in order to uh, do what you're supposed to do each day and put forth your best effort then going out on your own is probably not for you. It's mm -hmm. probably not the, not the right move. So I, that wasn't the issue at all for me. I mean, I was more motivated than ever, right? From the time I I, I did this, as you know, there, there's a there's a lot of pressure um, and the clock's ticking because there's no paycheck coming in other than what you generate. So if that's not motivation to your, <laughs> to the point you made about with Robin Williams quote, mm -hmm. I don't know what is, right? Yeah. No one was eating in my house unless I figured this out. But I missed having someone to bounce ideas off of. I missed yeah. having someone to tell me uh, or guide me in, in cases where I had a, a tough decision to make. I'd look over my shoulder, you know, so to speak, and no one's there. That was a weird thing to get used to. And it took me years to, to get used to that. Wow, and, years, not yeah, months. Yeah. No, years, years. And, and because wow. you know, knowing that the buck stops with you is, is, is fine. But you still want someone to to say, look, you know, should I choose red or blue here? And <laughs> it was years for me be, until I got to the point where, you know, I'm just gonna. You, you have to get really comfortable making decisions yeah. constantly when you don't have that person to report to. But again, that that's an entrepreneurial challenge for anyone who goes that route. I think the lo the 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 risk of loneliness is also inherent with with every job that's virtual today as we've probably talked about many times in the past where um you know as a freelancer by the way it doesn't mean you're isolated it doesn't mean you have to work at home you can go on site in many cases you yeah. um depending on your job and 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 it's worth making the point that the freelance market really doesn't is it a great fit for every type of role um yeah you know, there's mm. stuff that just really won't won't um, won't fit into it but um you know, you have to know yourself. You have to know, um, you know, what your role will be. You know, you shouldn't just you know, jump off a, off this cliff without having a plan and having good, you know, do doing research. I would recommend anyone considering becoming a freelancer to get on Upwork and Fiverr and Toptal, the the three sites that that I would recommend for for freelance work and to make mm -hmm. sure. The, the roles that you're seeing are one out there in demand and you, you'll see pretty quickly if you visit any of those sites, yep. which roles are not you know, ask yourself what kind of network you have. What's the strength of your network who, who, you know, from a referral standpoint, from a reputation standpoint, ask yourself what value you bring to the table mm. that, that others would be willing to pay for, right? What's unique about what you do. Um, and if you can't answer those questions with it, that, you know, in a very positive way leading towards the freelance outcome, you probably shouldn't do it um, or you shouldn't do it soon. I think making a plan for, I mean, and the numbers are enormous, Rick. I mean, there was a study that McKinsey did 
um, recently they just released where they they estimate that 58 million Americans currently identify themselves as an independent worker. That's a really big number, isn't it? That's a huge number for that. What's the criteria? Did they say what the criteria was? Well, I mean, I think because the, I could be a freelancer at night doing Uber Eats while I work my corporate job during the day. I think that would be part of it, right? Okay. And so that yeah, the side hustle. I because you, you, you mentioned that earlier. I, you know, I consider those side hustle jobs um, in a bit of a different category, but it's it was a freelancer because you're 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 working independently, um, but you're working independently for the same organization indefinitely, right? Um, where I think of freelance is more, you work for uh, a variety of organizations yeah. uh, over time, but um, those are independent workers for sure. Now there's a lot of court cases, I guess, going on right now <laughs> to challenge that because if you only drive for um, Uber, are you, what's the difference between you as an, um, are you, are you really not an employee at that point? Right. I think, uh, I think the difference being you get to choose your own schedule generally speaking, right? Uh, Yes, it's being challenged in a lot of places, right? So now we're getting into the contract versus employee thing, right? So because if you're if you're a freelancer, a contractor, a legitimate freelancer, the whoever you're doing the work for should not be able to dictate how you do the job. They should only be able to dictate what job needs to be done. Mm, Okay, right? That's right. You start, you know, oh, like by the way, now, now we're back to government involvement. Yes. In, <laughs> yes. In, yeah. in, in, a, in a decision between someone who has a job that needs to be done and someone willing to do that job. I mean, I think it's anyway, that that's that's a that's a, a soapbox for a different day. But it is interesting um, when you see the complexity of, of uh, that government involvement when no one's asking for it. Right. Like. <laughs> If you don't like what Uber is offering, don't go work for Uber. I mean, that's it. I don't need to go work for them and then uh, then complain about it. Don't go work for them. It's back to our co- quiet quitting discussion from last week. Almost. Oh, dude. So, okay. I it, it, So I've got to bite down on something that you said that I think is really, really crucial, Pete, and it's the work ethic. A lot of people think that it, it's a lot of people are wrong in their thinking about how easy entrepreneur uh, being an entrepreneur is or they think it's hard but they just completely underestimate how hard it is going back to when you said about missing having a boss so i started thinking about it, i'm like you know what you have a point because i miss having a structure where i needed to get something got done me having a boss meant that i had a goal that i didn't have to set my boss did Right. And I would get up and I'm like, okay, I need to do this. I don't have to worry about setting that goal up. Right. And it was one of those things that I enjoy what I did when I had a boss. What I didn't enjoy is me starting it. Pete, I'm one of those that I, I, I love what I get to do. I really, really enjoy it. But to start to do it is the hard part. Right. If I spent the first five minutes just doing grinding away something I don't want to do, that's when the discipline comes in and then everything else falls in place for me. Where people would have an issue is if they have a hard time to do it the entire time, (laughs) right, from beginning all the way to end. So that work ethic has to be there because you have to set those goals. And if you don't hit those goals, you don't have to worry about your boss writing you up or firing you or having that uncomfortable discussion. You got to worry about just not having a client anymore, which maybe could be a bigger issue than just your boss being upset at you. Yeah, you could look at it two ways, and and I I wouldn't recommend one of these ways. You which is, well, when I'm doing it for myself, then I'll have a good work ethic, right? Oh. Even though evidence indicates I don't have a good work ethic based on my performance to date, but when I'm doing it for myself, I will. On the other hand, I believe that that could happen, right? But I would, but I wouldn't want to risk my livelihood on on that right i mean you need to be someone who is willing to do whatever it takes and that's a that's a big statement that's a big commitment um for me personally before i took that step to be on my own i remember the day like it was yesterday my wife made me a plaque that i have on my desk on the other side of my camera here that says december 5th 2005, you know, Four Corner Resources was established. That's and awesome. I remember that first day 
sitting at my desk going, what the hell did I just do? <laughs> right? Like here I am. I just, I just consciously walked away from a really good paycheck. That's the risk I was talking about earlier. You, and you're walking that, away from that stability. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it was going really well, but that's the time, right? Just like you hear athletes, Barry Sanders quit when he was healthy and on top. Right. And everyone's like, why are you quitting now? What am I supposed to quit when I'm banged up <laughs> and, and no one wants me anymore? Right. So get, you know, that, you know, when you've been terminated and you don't have, cause you mentioned it earlier and I don't think of the freelance market as, as um as as a, as a thing to do when you don't have other options i think it's a thing to pursue when you have uh many options and you choose this one anyway because that point being when you're marketable when you have that value to bring that's when you should be a freelancer not hey no one wants to hire me let me go try it on my own because it is infinitely harder right to to i mean my life was much easier as an employee than, than it was when I went on my own. But the point that I, I started to make, and I want to be sure to, to, to make it is I already knew I was, I had a great work ethic. I was, but my mm -hmm. employer, I mean, my employer got the benefit of that. So did I. And so I'm also someone who doesn't ever think, uh, well, gosh, you're doing all this for the benefit of, of this organization. We well, shouldn't be in that job in the first place unless it's a mutual benefit. So yeah, I'm not anti employee employer. I'm anti what the system has done to to um, to those relationships. Because when I was an employee, I already worked as hard as I could. I already knew that I was I'd work crazy hours. I would be up at 2 a.m. responding to proposals because that's what I was you know, incented to do based on my compensation plan as a salesperson. The more I worked, the more I was going to get paid pretty straightforward mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. But there were a lot of people who I worked with who didn't, who didn't operate that way. They, you know, we, there was a lot of freedom. I was a, I was an outside salesperson. My boss lived in another city. I, I could mm -hmm. spend my day however I chose, but I spent it working my butt off because that's, that's how I was going to be rewarded. So I'd already done that. So I, it wasn't a matter of work ethic. It was, a, it, you know, the, again, the risk, the bigger risk to me was not taking the step and relying on someone else to, to, to decide whether I was you know, worthy of employment from day to day. And I went, well, that's a crazy way to, <laughs> to do things for in my situation. Uh, I thought there was a better way. So are you saying, and it's actually want to make sure I get this correctly. Are you I, I think I hear you saying that work ethic is important, but that's not a determining factor. It should be a determining. No, I'm saying it should be, but but I I like you have to know yourself well enough to know that that work ethic can be in place. I think yeah, okay. the evidence of your past should be what you rely on, but it's not necessary, I guess. Uh, but I, it's just a risk I wouldn't want to take. Like I said, yeah. for someone to go well. When I'm doing it for myself, then I'll start working hard. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> you know, work, no, you can work hard already and you shouldn't be in a job. Maybe that's the bigger point here. You shouldn't do anything. When you wake up in a day, as I mentioned earlier, it's all about priorities. And if that priority and how you're going to spend your day isn't to do the best you can in whatever situation you're in, yeah. change your situation. It doesn't have yep. to be freelance. It doesn't have to be Maybe it's even within your same organization, but but don't let that linger. You know this quiet quitting thing. Don't don't be, get sucked into that because let me tell you, I would recommend everyone have a. It's easier to have a good work ethic, a really strong work ethic, and maintain it than to have a bad one and then try to you know, and then Agreed. try to turn that into good one. Good luck with that, right? I, yeah, it's not going to happen. No, agreed. And 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 people uh, and people underestimate that. And I I don't know if that's a good thing or not, right? Because I want I think from my perspective, Pete, I want people to at least try whatever the passion is and try to do it on their own. But the reason I say people underestimate that and I like that the fact that people try it and fail, because that's how you learn with it, right? You really do learn from that. But I want people to know. If you decide to go out on your own, there are some things that you are not thinking about that now you're responsible for when that work ethic is going to help out. You're not only the president. You're not only the CEO. You are payroll. You are HR. You are marketing. You know what? Who's going to take out the garbage? That's going to be you, right? You're going to do all of these things, and then 
then, oh my God, it's time for dinner. All right, it's 9.30 p.m. It's time right. to eat. There's a lot of late. You know what? And even you, I'm going to call you out of here, man, and, and, and put you on blast. So about 15 years later, you have this company, a successful company, still runs great, and you still build, uh, burn the, the, uh, the, the uh, is it the midnight oil? It is candle on both ends. Is that what it is? I don't know. I'm a Gen (laughs) Xer. That's where it comes from. Okay. Anyway, um, no, because I remember you and I talking um, when Zingig was about to to go live, and we're texting at like at eleven at night. Yeah. And I'm like, what are you doing? And you're like, I'm still working on this website. I'm like, Friday night at 11 p.m., that's what you're doing. The president and owner of a successful company, that work ethic doesn't stop. So everybody listening, the opposite is also true right? Whether it's not a good idea, where it's not a good idea to just do it for yourself and then do the, and then find the work ethic later, you, you need to have the work ethic now, but it's not going to go away. (laughs) You still need that later on. Actually an interesting point. So I, you know, in thinking about starting um, a new business Mm -hmm. gig in in this website that I really believe in, uh, in, in that it, it's, bringing something that's necessary into the world, which is great career advice, no strings attached. And that doesn't, I, I, as we were creating more content uh, for staffing, we realized the, how great the need was. So that's why I decided to, to create Zengig. But I want, I didn't want to do it halfway, right? I, I didn't want to do it. I, I don't want this to be marginally successful. I want it to ultimately become the um, you know go-to career advice site that exists uh, for everyone, um, and so I had to sit my family down and say, "I'm I'm going to be less present than I have been," um, because it was uh, you know I went from having one job you know being president of a staffing company to having two, but even harder in a way because it was a, it's a startup. I mean, it is starting from scratch. We are we are trying to establish a brand that doesn't exist. It didn't exist. And I I know what that takes. And and so it was a big, you know, it had to be a conscious decision to go, man, if I take this step, there's a, I know what comes with it because I had to start one company where I remember telling my wife, I'm going to go, I'm going to quit my job. I'm going to start four corner. I remember where I was in the parking lot of Publix. She was pregnant with my now 16 year old, uh, mm. almost 17 year old. And I said, I'm going to do this in a few months. I'm going to quit. She goes, well, don't be stressed when the baby comes. I'm like, really? Don't be stressed (laughs) when the baby comes? Well, (laughs) that's a given regardless. I'm about to have a child number three. But, um, but I, I you know, I, I worked, you know, 70, 80 hours a week when I started, you know, for years when I started four corner just to get it to survive. And so there there's, I think you were, you were alluding to this earlier, there's a misconception that when people go out on their own, that with that freedom comes, comes less work. And I would tell you with that freedom comes significantly more work because as you said, you are, I didn't, I was naive when I, when I started the business, I didn't think uh, through things like, um, well, when I hired my first employee, he came, <laughs> he's been with, a, it was about three months and he walks into my office and says, Hey, what's our vacation policy? <laughs> well, damn, we need a vacation policy. <laughs> we need a little I didn't think about that. And so you really do need to think through, but that's where these sites that exist today for freelancers, you know, make it so much easier. You don't have to oh, God, yeah. go and, uh, and, and start a business with employees. You can just go be an independent contractor uh, and you can chart your own course. And it's really cool and worth exploring, um, you know, for people who are, um, yeah, I'd say mid career and beyond early career, mm, you know, get, you know, get the reps working for someone else, right? Yeah. You, know, you get that experience that will transfer once you're ready to go on your own, but don't rush it. You, you got to do it when the time is right. So here's what I heard. What I heard is if you decide to go out on your own, if you decide to be a freelancer and be your own boss, you it, it, it's it's going to take a lot of time your family has to be behind you right you have to let your family know that way they know what to expect because they have a stake in this game as well but if you communicating you letting them know exactly what's because people people freak out when they are caught off guard 
So if you let them know ahead of time, here's what's going to happen. It's going to be a difficult few months, if not years, right? And they're okay with it. Your mind is set. Then you planted that seed. You planted, I can't believe I'm about to say this. You planted the seed of freedom. And when that seed of freedom becomes the tree of freedom, now you can take the freedom fruit later on. stand up and salute? <laughs> well, she can stand up and salute. That's what I'm like. I know how this is going to come across because I'm thinking it in my head. Ricky, Planted say it. seed of freedom. Ricky, I yeah. think that needs to be a quote somewhere. <laughs> right. You know what? I'm not done yet. And then you get the tree of freedom later on that you can pick the fruit. Later on, it, it, you, you've worked so hard to cultivate this, this freedom that you just pick it whenever you want. Because, Pete, you didn't have to be up till 11 p.m. on a Friday night this far into your venture to launch this. We We got people that you can do that. But... The thing is that you're not, com- not to say you're not comfortable in letting them do that. It, 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 it's, it's you want your vision to be heard, if that makes sense. You want the vision to be understood. So obviously you want to make sure you lay that groundwork. And once it's running on its own, then you let people manage it, right? So that doesn't stop. But later on in about five years or so, then yeah, you'll be able to take a step back. Both these companies are running great. And here I am on my jet ski somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you have a jet ski or not. That's just a picture I painted in my head. I, I do not have a jet ski. No, yeah. Maybe that'll be the next thing. To that'll do. be the next one, yeah, yeah. from Tesla. Um, when you plug in, could you match? <laughs> Sounds pretty cool, of course. Yeah, it does, does sound pretty cool, right? Uh, electric jet um, ski. So, I th- yeah, I think that's a good place to end, Ricky. I mean, uh, uh, you yeah. know, the, the, we've it, it sounds like you agree that, yes. um, you know, the freelance market is something that's really um, – heading in the right direction for, for employees. There's lots of resources for you. There's lots of, there's lots written about this. And so just know yourself. I mean, that would, that, that's the main thing you have to be able to define you. So many people have come up to me um, over the years uh, and say, I want to start my own business. Great. What are you going to do? What's your idea? Well, I don't have that yet, but I want to start my own business. <laughs> no, 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 you know, don't, don't try to fit a square peg into a round hole or, or a square peg into a hole that doesn't even exist. Yeah. Find mm-hmm. you know, that, whatever that thing is that, that, that you do that, that others would want to pay for or that you do better than, than someone else or, you know, delivers unique value. You have to identify that to do it. Well, you have to want to do it and like to do it, I think. And then you have to be willing to work hard at it. And, and all of those things need to be in place first and then venture out on your own. And communicate. Make sure your family is aware. So that, that's why I'm glad you brought that up because a lot of people who are thinking about making this, uh, this jump, they, they do have families. And I got to give it to you, man. For you to do that when you have a – yeah, that's a huge risk, right? And I didn't know that um, – your wife was pregnant with your child when when you told her that I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this this job, and I'm actually surprised she reacted the way she did because I was expecting her to be to say, "Oh my God, are you kidding? No, why are we gonna do this?" Which is not any an irrational response. That is what a sane person would say, right? Like, "Oh my God, what are we doing?" But she was supportive. And that is crucial with anybody that has a significant other, that they have a family. Make sure your family is aware because it's going to be a lot of long nights. It's good. You are going to be absent um, most of the time at the beginning of it. And as long as you get a family that supports it, man, that's half the battle. That really is half the battle. It's huge. To, yeah. you know, whatever your situation is, you're right. If it's going to affect others, yeah. then make sure they're aware. Um, yeah. And if you're on your own, you don't have to worry about that. But uh, yeah, yeah it, it's. Uh, what does my dog think? Eh, I, I, <laughs> I do. I do look back and think, boy, that was curious timing. But but <laughs> it, it, yeah, but my mindset was really there was two things. One, um, I well three. One, I was confident I could do it, and I'd been mm-hmm. thinking about and talking about it for a decade. So there there was that. It wasn't like I was. It was fly by night thing, or I had lots of different ideas. It just just happened to be the flavor of the month. This was the same idea I talked about Mm. for, 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 and thought about for 10 years. Number two is, um, I was, uh, um, I didn't see it as a risk because I, I, I thought the risk was not doing it. I thought the risk was leaving my fate. And yeah, it was mid thirties, as I mentioned, seeing, you know, fast forwarding 20 years and being, you know, I'll just say it, we, 
whether it should be this way or not, but not nearly as employable as I was in my in my mid thirties as I would have been as as my as I got older and made more money and had a bigger title. I mean, there's fewer spots at the top, right? Yeah. yeah. So I'd much rather, you know, take the risk then, if if you want to call it that. Or I didn't. Again, I didn't see it as a risk. I thought the risk was not doing it and leaving my uh, fate in someone else's hands. And then and then the third thing is. I knew I could go back and get a job if I needed to He use that, that awful phrase. Like that was my fallback. Well, I'll do this. I know it's going to work. I, I, I don't mm-hmm. see it as risky. I mean, I was terrified, but it's natural to me. I mean, it's, it's, it's natural. Yeah. yeah. But, but then I thought my worst case scenario is I end up exactly where I am right now, a year from now. That was my, that was my, I, I, I gave myself a year. I had I budgeted for a year. We had to cut yeah. way back, of course. Um, and I, but I knew I could pay my bills for a year and didn't have to worry because I knew it wouldn't be overnight. I mean, that's the last point I want to make on this is just because, you know, success doesn't necessarily come quickly in that. We already know it doesn't come easily, but it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily come quickly either. So I had to, I gave myself a year to say, well, at the end of this 12 months that I, I don't have to worry about paying my bills in that time. And I knew, so I could go heads down on this mm-hmm. uh, and then I'll make a decision, is go or no go. Am I still good? Is can I can this work? If yes, then I I say the course. If not, well, I still have a family to support. As I mentioned, if I'm really wrong and it doesn't work, then I'll go back and work for the man. I mean, that was how that was how I thought. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. but that was my journey. That was my experience. Everyone's is a little bit different, but I think the universal things to consider as someone who's considering um, taking this step to be a freelancer is. Uh, um, those things are, are pretty intact as we have been talking about. So what I heard was that you had to scale back. So that's the reason why you don't have a jet ski. You have to sell it to keep a four corners <laughs> afloat. Right. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I, I, won't, I won't <laughs> say out loud how much money I was making in my, in my technology sales job, but let's just say you'd probably be even more surprised that I walked away from it. <laughs> no, I bet. No, no, no. I bet. I trust me. Trust me. I, um, I know I came from a sales environment and I saw how the salesmen, how much money they make. <laughs> so yeah, I just come back from a, a, a reward trip in Hawaii. Um, yeah. To, to make <laughs> about the time I was making this. Decision. Oh, wow. And so be like, ah, I'm out. I'm going to do my thing. But, but it turned out good. It turned out really good. And, and hopefully people would, would, would take this information to really take a step back. And what is it, what they want to do? Yeah, you know, it's, if it's, you, it's, sorry, keep going. No, well, I was just going to say, you know, it, it's it's one of the, Pete, I'm afraid of two things in life. Two things. Number one, sharks. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's, that's the, the first one. The second one is regret. And because time is so valuable that we don't, it, it, it passed like, like right now, we've been talking for what, 45 minutes, an hour, right? And, and, and it's, this is time we're not going to get back, right? But what I don't want to do, I don't want to be, you know, I'm done with work, I'm done with everything, and I'm just taking a look back at my life, and I just don't want to have any regrets about not taking that shot, Yeah. right? Absolutely. So to me, the regret is big. So folks out there listening, please, please take a look at this, figure out the pros and cons. This is on the, on the, on the uh, um, Zengig.com website. It was, it was published on August 15th, um, and the article is called... Uh, it's freelancing worth it, the pros and cons. It has never been an easier time to help people start their own freelance. Um, and even if that's not the case, even if, if that doesn't work and you want to have that secondary option to go back and work for the man, we got the options for you too. Go on zengig.com. You'll be able to find everything you need there to kind of help you in that venture. But uh, I got to tell you, somebody who's done it, I love it. I enjoy it. I love because I'm big on relationships, so it works for me. Um, and I love what I get to do. So what is that? What's that old saying? If you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. That's it. Is that what it is? Is that, that what is it is? It. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, I'm enjoying what I do so much. I forgot the quote. Um, <laughs> so, but I think, yeah, it's, um, um, it's, it's really interesting times and for employers. Now I know we're going to talk about this in the, on the other show for employers. This is an interesting time as well, because if you were trying to keep people engaged, you have to take a look at what's attracting people to go somewhere else. So that's a, a different conversation in front of the time. Yep. Yeah, but if you want to hear us talk about why employers should or should not consider hiring freelance, 
freelancers and, and embrace that market, you got to hop on over to the higher calling podcast. So we'll link it uh, in the, in the show notes and uh, we're going to keep this going, but from a different perspective. So from candidates or, or uh, for, for the work, you know, any workers out there um, who are looking, wanting to look at other options, explore it, get on Upwork, get on Fiverr, get on Topdoll, mm. see what, <clears throat> see what skill sets are in demand, see if it makes sense for you and, uh, and share, share feedback. We, we want to hear, hear from you here. So, um, uh, you know, thank you for listening today and, uh, please rate us, uh, please yes. subscribe to the podcast and drive safely out there. Let us know. And, uh, yeah, give us a like, send us some feedback. Let us know what you want to hear. Let us know what you want us to, uh, to, to uh, talk about. Pete and I would, would get together. And I think we have another Q and a coming up in a few weeks, right? Um, we do, I, I we do indeed. So but, uh, we'll do that. We'll take care of it. We, we will. So, all right. Well, thank you everyone for listening uh, today. And Ricky, have a great rest of your day, man. You too, sir. Have a good one. Bye. Um.